The 1990s began with hope for a peaceful decade. Many of the events of this first year were relatively quiet, but as the months passed, a new threat would begin to take shape in the Middle East. 1990 also had its fair share of pop culture memories, from a Beverly Hills zip code to a knockout heard around the world. 1990 was really a new beginning on many fronts. Let's take a look back at the events that made headlines, but that also jump-started the decade. To begin the year, on January 18th, authorities arrested Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry on narcotics charges after he was caught on camera smoking crack cocaine in a hotel room at the Vista International Hotel. He was sentenced in 1991 to six months in prison for possession of crack cocaine, but would again be elected mayor in 1994. On February 7th in Inglewood, California, Morningside High School basketball center Lisa Leslie scored 101 points in the first half against South Torrance High School. The game was so lopsided, South Torrance decided not to even play the second half and lost 102-24. to On February 9th, the Bradys returned to television for six episodes on CBS. The sequel focused on the Brady kids as adults, but it failed to get good ratings and was canceled after just one month. On February 11th, James Buster Douglas shocked the world by knocking out heavyweight boxing champion Mike Tyson in the 10th round. The fight was held in Tokyo, Japan, with Tyson being undefeated at the time, and the fight was meant to be a warm-up for the number one contender, Evander Holyfield. Apparently, no one told that to Buster Douglas, who ended up pulling off one of the biggest upsets in sports history. On March 18th, the largest art heist in U.S. history occurred in Boston, Massachusetts. In the early morning hours, 13 works of art, totaling over $500 million, was stolen from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, and the thieves have never been caught. Even today, there is a $10 million reward for information leading to the recovery of the art, which is the largest reward ever offered by a private institution. On March 20th, singer Gloria Estefan, who was riding on her tour bus outside of Scranton, Pennsylvania, heading to a show that evening, was involved in an accident which fractured her spine. A semi-truck crashed into her tour bus during a snowstorm leaving her critically injured. It would take her nearly a year to recover from the injuries. On April 8th, 18-year-old Ryan White who made headlines after being expelled from middle school after contracting AIDS from a blood transfusion, died from the disease. Over 1,500 people attended Ryan's funeral on April 11th in Indianapolis. Pallbearers were Elton John, football star Howie Long, and talk show host Phil Donahue. Elton John even performed at the funeral, which was also attended by Michael Jackson, Donald Trump, and Barbara Bush. On April 8th, David Lynch's Twin Peaks premiered on ABC. The murder mystery series starred Kyle MacLachlan and gained a cult-like following, which also attracted critical acclaim. The series is considered a landmark turning point in television dramas for the way it was filmed and its melodramatic characters. On April 15th, Fox introduced audiences to In Living Color, the sketch comedy style show was created by Keenan Ivory Wayans as an edgier version of Saturday Night Live, and it made stars of Damon Wayans, Jim Carrey, and Jamie Foxx. It was also a springboard for a then unknown fly girl dancer named Jennifer Lopez. On April 20th, the Hubble Space Telescope was launched into space aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. The launch was a new beginning for deep space observation that opened up spectacular views of the universe. NASA named the telescope after astronomer Edwin Hubble. 
On May 21st, the very last episode of New Heart aired on CBS. The finale became an all-time classic after it was revealed that the entire series was a dream sequence tied to the Bob Newhart show, which ended in the 1970s. Another surprise from the show was that Daryl and his other brother Daryl finally spoke. On June 4th, Dr. Jack Kevorkian assisted an Oregon woman in committing suicide, beginning a national debate over the right to die. Kevorkian publicly championed a terminal patient's right to die by physician-assisted suicide. He would go on to claim that he assisted in at least 130 suicides. On June 26th, President George Bush reneged on his 1988 promise of no new taxes, in a statement accepting tax revenue increases as a necessity to reduce the budget deficit. On July 24th, U.S. warships in the Persian Gulf were placed on high alert after Iraq moved nearly 30,000 troops to its border with Kuwait. The oil-rich nation of Kuwait held 20% of the world's oil reserves, and Iraq was preparing to invade it. On July 25th, sitcom star Roseanne Barr was asked to sing the national anthem at the Cincinnati Reds San Diego Padres baseball game. Not only did Barr butcher the national anthem, but she finished her off key performance by grabbing her crotch and spitting on the ground. The fans booed her off the field, and her performance was considered a national disgrace. On August 7th, U.S. troops were deployed to Saudi Arabia, beginning Operation Desert Shield. The operation would be a buildup of troops that would see nearly 700,000 Allied forces remove Iraq from Kuwait, which would begin in January. On August 12th, the best preserved Tyrannosaurus rex ever found was discovered in Faith, South Dakota. The fossils were discovered by Sue Hendrickson after she spotted a vertebrae jutting out of an eroded bluff. In the end, it took six people 17 days to extract the dinosaur's bones, and the specimen was affectionately named Sue after the person that found it. On August 27th, the album No Fences was released by Garth Brooks. The album made Brooks into an international superstar and would top both country and billboard pop charts. The album featured the songs The Thunder Rolls and Friends in Low Places, and has been the best-selling album of his entire career. On October 4th, a new teen drama premiered on Fox called Beverly Hills 90210. The show starred Luke Perry, Jason Priestley, and Shannon Doherty, and would become a global phenomenon, making teen idols out of all the cast members. On November 10th, Home Alone, written by John Hughes and starring Macaulay Culkin, premiered in Chicago. The Christmas movie would become the highest grossing comedy of all time and made Culkin an instant movie star. On November 15th, producers for the German pop duo Millie Vanilli confirmed that the pair did not sing a word on their Grammy winning album. Millie Vanilli was then stripped of their Best New Artist Grammy, and they became laughingstocks in the industry. On December 11th, mob boss and gangster John Gotti was arrested in Manhattan. The head of the Gambino crime family was charged with five murders, conspiracy to commit murder, loan sharking, illegal gambling, obstruction of justice, bribery, and tax evasion. A fitting close to the year following the Gotti arrest was the release of The Godfather Part 3 on December 25th. The Mafia film directed by Francis Ford Coppola was the third and final installment of The Godfather trilogy, bringing an end to the story and life of Michael Corleone. The film would go on to be nominated for Best Picture the following year, but it never received the critical acclaim that the first two films achieved. <laughs> 